Hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to be talking about my favorite BPAL, Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab, um, masculine scented things, scent note perfumes. My favorite masculine perfumes that they make. Um, of course, all of these are gender neutral. They don't have to be masculine, although these all scream masculine to me. So to each their own with what they feel. I pulled up all of the scent notes because I have a few to mention. Um, my camera right now is like tilted back and it's sitting on top of my headphones. My headphones are like squished between my tables. So at any moment it might go, we'll see. Um, but that's what the power of editing is for. Um, I, I put makeup on, I did all of this and I, it's fucking, 11 at night um so yeah i have a lot to go through i guess you should just start them off um this is really hard because there's different levels like i have deeper ones and i have lighter ones and i have more like not necessarily traditional masculine so i'm gonna start with the one that i can't pronounce um so this is it I don't know if it'll focus. This is part of their mainline collection. Um, I pulled a Google Translate up for you because I can't pronounce it for shit, but here you go. Vicomte de Valmont. Once again. Vicomte de Valmont. Okay, there you go. So that's the scent. Um, the scent notes are ambergris, white musk, white sandalwood, Spanish moss, orange blossom, three mints, jasmine, rose genarium, um and a spike of rosemary um you didn't hear that so this is like the most cologne -y one out of the bunch like if i've had people smell this and they're like that just smells like stripped cologne like you couldn't tell that there's all those natural ingredients in here to make this um it could potentially you could call it like a synthetic perfume although i do think it's really good still so this one on my skin I'm not gonna wear these. It right in the bottle, it smells sharp, like a sharp men's um, cologne, and it's not. It's definitely like deeper. Um, it's not rich deep, but it's deeper in the sense of like you have like a higher wash. This is this is gonna be really hard to detect, but like I have one in particular that's like a light smell that's like summery okay like you would call this like a fall fragrance because i'm not a fragrance reviewer but like i know that they are like very specific and like blah 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 this would be a fall or winter scent because it's way darker um yeah i get lots of compliments on this one um again like all the notes in particular they don't pull on my skin it just smells like a good cologne so moving on from that one because there's a lot to go off of the next one i want to talk about is galvanic um goggles so this one the scent notes are metallic notes with indian musk tobacco flower and uh african balsam so this is the bottle art i think it loaded um this one i had an imp of it and in the imp straight like metallic note like it smelled like rubbing alcohol and it was like honestly concerning and I put it on my wrist and I was doing that night I got it was a journey we were going places and I was in the car and I smelled this really nice like cologne it's like an older gentleman cologne and I realized that this is what I was wearing so this once it sits on the skin for a bit the metallic note goes away almost instantly and it just becomes like this really good deep friendly inviting um I just say older gentleman but that like that's what comes to mind with this one I highly, highly recommend you getting like a sample. I mean, you, all of these that I'm talking about are still available. They're not um, limited edition seasonal. There are a few that are limited edition and you can get into them, but the ones that I, a lot of them are. So highly recommend this one. Very, it's not necessarily clean, but it's like elegant. That's the word I'm gonna use, elegant. Um, next I have Mr. Nancy. Mr. Nancy is, this smells like Christmas, but on in particular with me on my skin, it definitely turns like this cologne type smell, and a lot of people like love it or hate it. Like a lot of people don't like Christmas smells, um, but like 
I think out of all the smells that I have, this one and Troll. Troll is like a burning tree, like very ashy. But this one is, um, I can pull up the scent notes now. This one is sugar cookies with bay rum, tobacco, and lime. So this is one of the best like bay rum scents that I've had where it's very like bay rum and not, there's nothing else that's like, pr like it's wanting it to go a different way. Um, because I've had a lot of stuff that has bay rum and you can smell it in there, but it doesn't smell like bay rum. It smells like other things and it's like moved all over the place. This smells like bay rum that's been sweetened and then the lime balances it out. Um, you don't get any citrus from it at all. Yeah, I don't get any citrus from it at all, but it just, it does this wash where all the ingredients just come together and it just makes this amazing scent. Um, it also has tobacco and I wouldn't call this like a beachy kind of scent. It's definitely warm, but like I said, it's inviting. It's um, sweeter in the vial, but once it's on the skin, I definitely feel like it darkens and deepens a little bit. Um, and then the next one we're gonna talk about is Mr. Chenzeborg, or I mean, Chernoborg. I can't remember how I pronounce it. I literally read American Gods. So this one is a limited edition. Mr. Nancy is as well. Um, this one, oof. This one I like, I don't know, I like it's so vulgar to say, but like this one is the one you wanna fuck with. The scent notes are unfiltered cigarettes, the leather and metal of sledgehammers, and octor octoral blood, slowly dying, and black incense. So black incense is one that I do not understand. Um, I don't know if I have other stuff with black incense. I've seen it come up in Lupercalia's before. Um, unfiltered cigarettes. So, and I'm, I feel like that might be what's at play here, but fuck, every time I smell this one. This is like, when I first got this, I was describing it as like Almoretto, and then I found out Almoretto was like um, almond, and I don't think that at all with this. This smells like white suede leather that's been like sweetened, I think from that black incense. Like I, ooh, this is so hard to describe this one. Like this is the one that I'm like, get this one. Like, cause for real, this one is like probably my favorite. Um, like perfume wise, like this is very unique. Um, the first one that I said, like, this is one that I think would go hand in hand with it, where it's it's a very cologne type smell. Um, I wonder what feminine skin would do with this. Because, I don't know, the scent nuts on me, they, what you smell in the bottle too, and what I love about this one, when you smell in the bottle, it goes on my skin and stays like that on my skin. I've mixed this with so many things. I've mixed this with Pumpkin 2 from 2008, um, which is a whole other thing. I don't know, from 2007? I don't remember. I've mixed this with Fall Scents, and you, it, it, this one just blends. You can mix it with anything, and it smells fucking fantastic. I've mixed it with a lot. Um, and then next, I have Jolly Roger. So Jolly Roger, um, it's supposedly one of their best-selling of all time, one of their most popular. Um, Jolly Roger is sea spray with undercurrent of leather, bay rum, and salty dry woods. So I actually hate leather, uh, black leather in particular. I love suede leather, it doesn't bug me. Um, but like black leather, I can't stand it. That's all, so that and lavender um, are two scents that I like despise. So Dorian made a video and he described this as like if you wanna smell like the sea and I never even thought about that before. But once you have that in your mind, you definitely can kind of see where that was pointed at. So the sea spray is like what you smell when it's wet. And this one again, this one morphs a little bit once it's on the skin, but it's pretty true. A lot of these are pretty true to what they smell like, except one um, on the skin. The dry woods come out a little bit later and I don't find, that's the one though too that I really love because I don't particularly love cedar. Um, a lot of wood notes bug me because they just smell too, like, what, it's like a distraction. That's a good way of describing it. It's like a distraction where it doesn't pull the other side out. Whereas this one, it's definitely woody, but not in a way that's, like, describable. The bay rum in this one, 
you can't detect it's there. It, the, this is a case where the Bay Rum like blended with other things and you can't specifically find it, although it, it pointed it in the right direction. It, it sailed the sea to go the right way. So this one is a good starter one, I'd say. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I've had lots of times. Lots of times with that one, if you get what I'm saying. Okay, so this one's like my favorite because it has my favorite scent note in particular. This is El Dorado. Um, so I had an imp one time, this is part of the general catalog, um, of this, and that imp must have been really old because it like fossilized and it was like so delicious. It smelled like straight up cologne inside the imp. I'm like, what is this? Scent notes are copal resin incense blowing through halls of dazzling gold. Dazzling. I don't know why I just said it like that, but, um, so copal is my favorite scent note on my skin. Copal's weird. Copal smells like this weird resiny mineral kind of smell. And what this one does, and it still smells like that, but once it sits on the skin for like a few minutes for me, it turns into this like really nice cologne um, that I would probably describe as like summer scent. Um, it's warmer, but again, it's more like Mm, it's so soft in the vial because I've had this one a while. This one, like, if I had to tell you which ones to get, I'd probably say, and I don't know how this is going to read on camera, but like, uh, Mr. Trenisborg one, definitely get that one out of all of them if you're like looking for like a stand, like you're, it's going to be good, that one. Um, El Dorado, I'd say definitely test it. And this is the thing is like El Dorado doesn't particularly smell that great in the vial, but what it does on my skin and how my skin chemistry treats it is what like is so good for me, but I could definitely see that this could go wrong for some people. Um, I don't see this going wrong for other people. Um, okay. And then the gold note. So gold note is something that's popped up a lot with BPAL and I can't particularly call it out on things. It's like a shiny note, because I've tried some where it said it had gold and I couldn't find it. So I feel like gold might be something that ages away, where the older the bottle is and like it got rid of like a metallic-y kind of note, because that's the thing, like gold doesn't smell metallic-y when I've smelt them before. Although this one, the copal, is like that weird resiny smell. So you just have to smell it to understand what I'm talking about. So then this is the next one I'm gonna talk about. The Chariot. So this is part of the uh, Vampire Terra, yes. Um, this is a, I don't even know how you would describe this one. So it's, a, it's the scent of hot metal and stardust. Uh, lined or limbed i can't read so far away with bergamot aldehyde so bergamot this was the first one that i fell in love with because bergamot is a very masculine floral um actually crazy i know it this one's very light and neutral i'd say um the metal i love things that have metal not scent note in them yes so again this one people either love it or hate it but this one's borderline soapy um, I don't find that it goes soapy on my skin, but I could definitely see that this could go too soapy on other people. So this one's very like a light, fresh kind of smell compared to other ones where they're dark and heavy in cologne world. Because again, we're, this is all cologne world type smell. These are not like very natural smelling things like fresh. Oh my God. The words that I'm using, it's so hard to describe, but this one, if you love like clean or like almost citrus so this one is definitely citrusy um i'd say but not in a way that's like calling citrus it's more like leaning in that category where i'm saying that it's like light and energetic kind of so we'll go over that one um what is the next one i'm going to talk about okay wild so wild is here it is um wild scent notes are uh, Petrullis, Passion, uh, Tonka Beans, Decadence, uh, The Philosophy of Bergamot, I don't think this is philosophy, A Bergamot, Moss, Scythe, Nism, 
and sharp wit of lavender and hopeless romantic longings of jasmine and thyme so this is the one set note because i have like a shit ton of beep out like we're talking like hundreds here hundreds um this is the one scent the one scent that has jasmine or not jasmine lavender in it that i love like absolutely love my skin, if something has lavender in it, it just pulls lavender and it starts to smell like this dirty floral kind of smell or it pulls laundry. On my skin, I don't even smell lavender at all. This one fucks me up every time. Um, so this is like one of the darkest, heaviest ones possible. Like if one was Axe Body Spray, I'd say that this would be Axe Body Spray, but this is like very natural in comparison, like very natural. Um, I had a situation where I was working at Pizza Hut, fun facts about me, um, where I thought this particular coworker was wearing cologne and I kept smelling it every time I'd walk in. Um, and he's like, no, I'm not. And then I realized it was me. So this one's weird where when I put it on my skin, it doesn't particularly smell a lot at first but like give it say 30 minutes and then it starts amping up a lot and this was in summer so that does change things um but this one just starts amping up on me and it smells super super good um as they would say in perfume world this would have a really big throw on my skin after a while the next one i want to talk about is sinus so this is part of their RPG collection, and the scent notes are white mint, eucalyptus leaf, white frankincense, and blue white musk. This one I would compare a lot to wild, except this one's way sweeter. Um, white mint, any kind of mint scents I'm obsessed with now because they don't smell like mint, like pepperminty. They always just go like this really, I've just had good luck with mint. Um, eucalyptus leaf, I don't smell eucalyptus on this at all. White frankincense, I don't particularly smell that either. It could just be adding to the sweetness. The note that I'm really curious about is the blue white musk because I, I really want to, I know what white musk is, but blue musk, I, I generally don't understand with that one because every time I've tried to like search out blue musk and like bought bottles that had blue musk as like one of the dominant notes, it it's very random. Like it's just a completely different scent. I'm like, okay. Whereas with white, no, white musk, you can pick it up in things and you're like, okay, I understand that that was like a base and you can get that out of there. Um, this one definitely is like um, more gender neutral version of uh, wild, but sweeter. And then the last one I want to talk about, want to talk about, last one I want to talk about is Dracul. So Dracul is black musk, tobacco, fern, Balsam of Peru, cumin, bitter clove, crushed mint, orange balsam. So when I first got this a long time ago, I smelled like actual mint in the bottle, but also this one attacks you because there's so much shit going on. And that's the curiosity of this one. Um, now it's definitely aged in, oh my God, I think I'm like out. I'm very low on Dracul apparently, or it's just really thick. I think it's both. Um, so this one, it, the tobacco, you can definitely smell balsam. So like tobacco, firm balsam, orange blossom, I think are the prevalent, like the big dominant notes in this one. Um, bitter clove, I don't get clove at all. I think that just mixed in to add to like um, a rich spice. Black musk, I don't, I think that just also adds to like the smell of it. So this one on my skin, I've tried this on different people and this one reacts very differently because there's so much going on. Certain people like, the I've had a lot of people that were just smells like orange blossom and then I've had people that's like straight up just tobacco. Um, so definitely worth a shot to try this one, but I would recommend it. We've talked about that one a lot. Um, so then the last two things I wanna talk about are atmosphere sprays. But this one I want to talk about is the Oris Club from the Hellboy collection. This is the new, new Hellboy that they made. Um, and then the scent notes in this one are... Ancient tombs and disturbing artifacts clutter the shelves of a posh club where eons of incense smoke have sweeped, seeped, or sweep, seeped into suede and leather seats. A whiff of pipe tobacco and cologne 
um, bourbon and gunpowder. So this one is a whammy because when I first got this, and to this day, I still don't smell a lot of that. Um, okay, so we just figured out that we can only record 21 minutes on my camera. As I'm saying, the cologne note in here, and cologne notes in general from Bipel, is like, I generally don't understand where they go with that because, like, what kind of cologne are we talking about? I've, there's the one from, in particular, it's from, uh, Graveyard Something from Neil Gaiman. Uh, graveyard something but like there's like this one where there's three clones mixed into one and it doesn't smell like cloney at all to me it's like very green however we're talking about hellboy um gunpowder i don't think i ever smelled at any point i think it just adds like kind of a dirty note in there with a pipe tobacco mm, i out of all this i'd say this was a sweet suede tobacco. I think the bourbon adds to the sweetness. Bourbon's another note too that my skin doesn't like. I don't particularly hate bourbon, but bourbon doesn't last on my skin. But this is the spray, so what, what you smell in the bottle will go on your skin. Um, I've gotten compliments of this, and if you generally wanted a more... Say you like wanted a hard, leathery kind of perfume, but you wanted it not as like dark and normal smelling in the sense of like it's very harsh leather i'd recommend this one where it's sweeter it's it's just more interesting and inviting to me um and then my all-time favorite and the most uh what are you wearing like i this is the one i get complimented on the most is lich's laboratory again this is part of the rpg section um, hissing vials of acid, swirls of thick incense, creeping mosses, flecks of grave loom, noxious potions cluttered the uh, blackened stone barriers of an abandoned bur burial vault. So every time I've ever pronounced this, like, it, it's odd because the bar stone barriers of an abandoned burial vault. You put, there's a lot of bees in there. A lot of bees. Um, this one. Oh my god. So this one's like spice heaven, but spice where you don't think red, spice where you think green, and you're like, what? So I'm literally just going to spray this to get an understanding. Um, so this smells like a cologne that came out of a forest, that came under a swamp, that like, there's actually a secret laboratory under that swamp. I would call that this because it's sweet. It's mossy, um, grave loom, definitely there. Stone burial vaults. There's definitely like a stone um, cement kind of like old crypt thing going on there, but in a really great way. If you don't particularly love that, it's not a standout, but it's something that's there that makes it interesting. Um, but I get compliments on this one the most. The most. So that was all the scents that I talked about in particular. Um, again, like, I hope that you got kind of understanding where, because I'm very, I, I really like cologne type smells, like masculine smelling things and bee pals where I go to that because I hate mainstream perfume a lot. Um, but what I've discovered after the years of bee pal and like searching for cologne stuff is like stuff that bee pal in particular says that's like very cologne it's 50-50 chance of, like, if I like it or not, or if I even describe it as cologne, or it's just, like, bourbon-y. Like, for example, um, Knucklebones, I believe that was it, from the Carnival Diabolique collection. Oh, I should have worn that shirt. Um, that just smells like bourbon to me. It doesn't smell very masculine, but there's a cologne in there, like, it aftershave and cologne, I think, and it doesn't pull that out either. It just smells like bourbon to me. Um, but, like, compare the chariot to Mr. Charmsburg. These are completely different worlds. They're definitely both cologne but they're completely different. Like, this is light and this is dark. But if I helped you understand a little bit more or, like, find sense that you've never even heard of before, like, El Dorado, probably never even heard of this one. This one's probably been hiding in the general catalog. And this one is such a standout for me. Um... I don't know. Just my skin loves that. So, anyway, if you enjoyed watching or you already have some of these scents and you have comments to talk about, like, please let me know because 
I'd love to hear, especially with different skin chemistry. Um, like masculine leaning colognes are so interesting with different skin chemistry because they can be taken in so many different ways. So, um, but yeah, if you enjoyed watching, thank you. I mean, if you enjoyed watching, you probably watched until this point, but like, we'll see. That's a lot of minutes talking about BPAL. Um, but honestly, I could talk about BPAL for literally ever. I have, um, I'm getting a lot of the Halloweenies that came out this year, and I have, um, I can't remember how many in particular, but I bought a lot of the Lilis uh, decants as well. I'm excited to try those, but yeah, I haven't eaten anything, and it's 11.30, so I'm gonna go eat some food and smoke a bowl. Hopefully you are doing the same, because like, that sounds great. Anyway. Have a good day. In case anyone wanted to see like what my makeup looked like. But yeah.